Hello and welcome to another model building workshop and today I'm gonna look at the M3 Lee. I am Mr. Allen coming to you from Providence, Rhode Island here in my basement workshop on behalf of the Community Libraries of Providence. So we're looking at the M3 Lee medium tank of the United States and this is the old Tamiya kit and uh, we're gonna look at the Grant, the other version that, that was sold to the British as well. So this is quite the odd looking tank if you look at it and you're not really a tank nut you'd be wondering what were they thinking with this well <laughs> there's a few things going on here uh so first off you're going to notice there's a gun in the hull nice large 75 millimeter gun then we have a turret with a 37 millimeter gun and then we get this little tiny one above that with a machine gun a lot going on here huh so a couple things are happening so in 1940 the united states was watching the germans just overrun europe and realized boy we've got to get our tank development up to speed because we don't have anything that's going to be able to deal with this german blitzkrieg that's going on in europe so we need to start building something to <laughs> just in case so they quickly put some plans together to modernize their tank forces because at the time they pretty much had the uh, like an M2 light tank in service and then they were working on the M3 and the M3 which became known as the Stuart guess the, or the Honey as names the British gave it uh, an M3 light tank basically was armed with this uh, 37 millimeter gun here and that was it so the United States saw that there was a need to get something bigger into a tank quickly, and this was a quick way of doing it. Build a build a frame, get a gun in there, you know, and the idea was you get a 75 and you got the 37 millimeter anti-tank gun too. So this is kind of gonna be a jack of all trades and quickly put into production. So by the end of 41, these things were starting to roll off the assembly lines, and then they were out in frontline units. Um by 42 mainly with the British but we'll explain that more in a minute um, yeah so the United States ended up putting these to use early uh, you know and in 42 they were out in the Solomon Islands with these fighting the Japanese and then they were in North Africa by the well by the end of uh, 1942 they were having these things in uh, North Africa fighting the Germans and the Italians so this one here is in the markings of this is the second battalion of the 67th armored regiment of the second armored division from 1942 and what's interesting is that in this particular case what they were using is the army air force emblem which this was not at all a common practice for tanks which was kind of why I decided to do these markings because I thought that's odd I like it <laughs> so most of the ones that were in combat for the United States against the Germans and the Italians were with the first armored division and uh, and their markings I can see them there white stars and they had these uh, different geometric patterns on the front if you look at the top picture there to indicate uh, regiment and position of the battalions etc so these are the marking options that come with this Tamiya kit yeah so it talks about in this very long history that they've got you know it talks about the development of the tank and then they were involved in the uh, full-scale tank-to-tank fighting in Tunisia in 42 and early 43. You know, they were fighting the uh, German 10th Panzer Division and the 501st Tiger, you know, the heavy tank division um, unit of the German Army, the Africa Corps, or Panzer Army Africa, I think, at that point. And it says here that the... Um, 54 out of 60 Lee tanks had been had been put out of out of action in that fighting, but they did stop the advance of the uh, 
the 10th Panzer Division and Panzer Army Africa at that time. So, whew. Let's look at the assembly. It's pretty standard uh, fare for the Tamiya kits. You know, this is the old one. And there are a lot of companies that have made versions of this now. I think Mini Art has got a gazillion <laughs> variants of the Lee and Grant series that you can build with full interiors and everything else. You know, but this is the old one from like the 70s with all the kind of basic things that some of us older modelers remember growing up on. So this is a very simple construction, easy, kind of easy to build kit. And I remember building something like this. I think I built one of these when I was younger. So they're, they're not at all complicated to build really. Just a number of steps because you got the turret and you got the hull gun. So there's, a, there's things to do on this, but it's not a complicated build. And it's rather enjoyable, and they've got, like I said, quite the history to go with it. And then there is the M3 Grant, which is out there, and this is the one that was sold to the British. And as you can immediately see, the British version had a different turret, because the British, you know, wanted a different design for their turret. I think they wanted more radio equipment. I think that's the the key thing they were trying to do here. So they wanted a different design with their with a cast turret that was different from that of the, the Lee. So the Lee was named after the Civil War General Robert E. Lee and of course the Grant was the counterpart for the Union Army of um, Civil War General um, Ulysses S. Grant. Grant Lee. And this is still in production, this kit. I've got this new other hobby shop recently here in Rhode Island, so. Interesting to see. Pristine white paper from a new kit. Because <laughs> I usually have all these yellowed things from all these old vintage things that I'm buying. So the Grant was supplied to Britain by the uh, the Lend-Lease program that the United States had established with the British. And these were showing up in North Africa, I believe. I think it's about a spring of, uh, yeah, this is May 42. These are showing up at the Battle of Gazala, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it was a sudden shock to the Germans and the Italians that they suddenly were coming across a tank, a big tank with a powerful gun that could uh, outrange the, like the, the Panzer III at the time, like the Panzer III uh, G and H series, uh, they would have had a 50 millimeter short barreled gun. And the 75 that were on these tanks could outrange it. And it was the first time that the Africa Corps found themselves up against a gun that that was hitting them long before they could hit back. And it caused quite a panic among the German tank crews, and the Italians were in a similar situation with their M1340s and M1441s. With their 47 millimeter guns, were also finding their shells bouncing off this thing and going, oh great, what do we do now? Um, so it was a bit of a shock in the, uh, in the war in North Africa although the tactics of the Africa Corps managed to prevail until October of 42 in you know the Battle of El Alamein when these tanks along with the early Sherman tanks and just the, the vast numbers that the, of tanks that the British had suddenly turned the tide and put the Italians and the Germans and the entire Africa Corps on the run. Only for the Germans to find <laughs> the Americans landing on the other side of them, behind them, in uh, Morocco and Algeria, with their own army. And then the sandwich situation began. And then soon, the end of the war in North Africa. And that is the real quick cliff note version of that. <laughs> so again, it has a pretty simplified construction. Oops. So for those of you that want a more detailed version of 
the Lee or the Grant tank, you may want to look at Mini Art and some of these other things that are out there. But if you want a simple, fun build, to me is always good for that. And if you have kids, these are always good for them. Camouflage schemes for the Grant, basically in different desert colors with a sand base and uh, either green or brown and tan style camouflage or just overall sand. Of course, the British have different uh, types of sand color, you know, depending on where they were in the desert and what year it was. And there's a whole study you could do on, on just camouflage painting. You know, the United States is a little simpler and olive drab, although they did do a few different camouflage patterns. And in some cases, uh, in the desert, they just quickly grabbed the sand, added water to make mud, and just smeared it all over the tank to try to hide, you know, the dark green in the desert. And uh, you'll see some photos, if you go digging, of these things streaked in different types of sand, literal sand patterns to try to hide the dark colors. So most of these are from the, let's see, yeah, the 7th. Desert Rats Division, and the other one is though, the 22nd Brigade over at uh, Gazala. So there's a few different marking options here. It has the rubber band treads, which for me isn't a big issue since if you look carefully, these American treads did have a rubber shoe on them anyway. Um, so, and they tended to have a pretty tight, didn't sag a whole lot because the way the, uh, the return rollers on the top of the tank were set up. So there wasn't a whole lot of sag. These are pretty tight tracks anyway. So I don't think it's much of an issue, but you know, you as your own modeler will make your own decision of what you think is appropriate. You know, as the Basic tart pieces. The tart bottom is kind of interesting how they have it done on this one. And you get the pretty one piece hull top, which some may find that overly simple. And I guess you're right, you know, but you could do it in different ways. Different manufacturers have a different single piece hull tub. You know, and you get your running gear and all of the wheels and stuff there. And that's pretty much what there is to this kit. So the parts count's not particularly high, considering the it's always fun trying to put things back in the box after. <laughs> that's an art in itself. But considering the amount that's going on here, the parts count is kind of low really. So let's take a look. The standby of some different versions of this vehicle. This thing's heavy. So you can see there's some M5s on this side. Just, you see some different versions here. In North Africa and in the Pacific. And those have the yellow painted stars and stripes, which they end up adapting in North Africa because the white stars were just way too bright and made perfect aiming points for German gunners. Although they did switch back to the white stars in Normandy because they wanted to make sure that friendly troops weren't firing on their own vehicles at least for a little while, and eventually they had to obscure that because like, same problem. And here's some of the Grant versions. For the most part, an overall sand. You got some Crusaders on this side. But there are s different versions of these Grant tanks that have like cloud or wavy patterns of camouflage on them, which you can easily find if you just search the internet. It's not hard to find at all. So, that's basically the Lee. 
I got this heavily weathered. A lot of dust on this thing. This guy keeps leaning over quite a bit. I didn't glue on the commander. Anyway, another fun tank to build. Again, easy, fun, not much of a challenge really. It's all about how you want to paint it and what kind of fun you want to do with it. Another classic by Tamiya. Okay, and that's today's model building workshop. Keep building and have fun out there, okay? We'll talk to you soon. Bye now. If I can exit this. <laughs> you got to love technical difficulties, right? <laughs> we'll see you soon.